in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear brethren, dear community members, it now has been four weeks since we heard the powerful and joyful words of the liturgy on Easter Sunday, Ec dies confecit Dominus. This is the day that the Lord has made. Joyful words, powerful words. And last Sunday we were reminded about this joy, which is an everlasting joy. A joy that comes from the union with, with Christ, a joy that comes only if we live in a state of grace, and a joy that no one can take, us, take from us. However, this joy is fragile, and it could also be lost by sin. But today, there is a different challenge that the disciples hear from Jesus' words. Jesus' loving teaching challenges them and challenges us to contemplate his departure. We heard last Sunday again, modicum et non videbitis me, a little while and you shall not see me. And again, a little while and you shall see me. And these words lead us to today's gospel where Jesus declares, vado ad eum qui misis me. I go to him that sent me. Indeed, we just heard, it is expedient to you that I go. Jesus wanted his disciples to understand that his earthly ministry was drawing to a close. Jesus knew that his departure was necessary for the coming of the Advocate, of the Holy Ghost, of the Paraclete, the third divine person of the Holy Trinity, and since this announcement, the disciples had to grapple with the reality that the Lord Jesus Christ will not be physically among them forever. They were now to live in faith. They were to be guided by the Holy Ghost, promised by Jesus himself. So we can easily imagine the disciples' shock they had enjoyed walking in Jesus' presence. They had enjoyed so much speaking with him, sharing food with him, witnessing his miracles. But now some may have felt a sense of abandonment or even fear of becoming orphans without him, far from Jesus. Yes, they were slow to understand that the same Spirit who dwelled in Jesus would also dwell within them, empowering them to proclaim his teaching to the end of the earth. These disciples were the soil which Jesus sowed his seed, and all of them became the predecessors of countless saints, countless missionaries who spread the gospel throughout the world. We are surrounded by saints. So throughout the year, in the liturgical calendar, we pray to a special saint. We are under the protection of so many saints whom we do, we do not see, but they do pray for us, they do intercede for us. And think about St. Paul, for instance, the great apostle of the Gentiles, whose tireless effort took him far from his house, took him across Asia Minor, took him to Greece, took him to Rome. You could consider Saint Francis Xavier, who also had to go far from his house. He had to go to India, to Japan, and even closer to us, why not to, to think about the great apostle of Ireland, Saint Patrick, who also left his home to evangelize Ireland. So you see, for all the saints, it was the same spirit of the risen Lord who was burning in their lives. The same spirit of the risen Lord who was leading them to preach, to convert, to baptize. And now Jesus told them that 
a little while and uh, they will not see him. What a shock. So the disciples were slow to understand, slow to believe. But what about us? When we come to the church, we may be filled with good resolutions, especially when we are surrounded by so beautiful things, so uplifting things and music and rites, symbolism in the liturgy. When we are surrounded by all these divine things, it's more helpful. But moreover, we are comforted by the real presence of our Lord, Jesus Christ himself, really, truly, substantially present in the Holy Eucharist. But as soon as we return home, we struggle again. We face with um, distractions. We are challenged with uh, all kinds of pressure, of doubts, lukewarmness. We are surrounded by temptations of all kinds. So what can we do? What should we do? Is the solution to live like uh, monks, like nuns, separated from the world? Is it a solution to turn our family life as a little monastery? I would say yes and no. But I will especially remind you the beautiful and wise words of Saint Francis de Sales, who wrote, do not wish to be anything but what you are and try to be that perfectly. Do not wish to be anything but what you are and try to be that perfectly. In other words, the message and the invitation for each one of you is come to the church, but take Jesus with you after Mass. That's a beautiful spiritual program. Take Jesus with you after Mass and live close to him at home by practicing virtue in your private life, by practicing virtue in your public life, at school, at home, in your job. And remember that God knows everything. God sees everything. Remember that the risen Lord to whom we pray so much, the one we cherish, we venerate, we adore so much, is not confined to the walls of the church. And you must allow him to dwell within your heart and in your homes. Remember the words of the Gospel of St. Matthew, where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them, there I am with you. And again, and surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. So you see, it's really at home, it's really with your daily actions that we can embody the spirit of the saints. It's at home, it's in, by fulfilling your daily duties that you can pray, you can hope, you can trust in God's mercy with the saints. What is your favorite saint? I hope the response comes quickly to your mind. That shows that he's close to you. She is close to you. Think about uh, Saint Padre Pio, for instance. Uh, powerful words. Uh, and you could repeat, uh, remember the times when he said, uh, pray, hope, and don't worry. Worry is useless. God is merciful and will hear your prayer. It's at home with the saints that uh, you can turn your soul into a holy house, your holy home, and you can be contemplative as well. As uh, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, Saint Therese of Lisieux, she said once, I will spend my heaven go doing good on earth. It's at home again that you can and you must be missionaries. You must be a missionary at home. You must have this great desire to set the world on fire, but in charity and in truth. These two things must always be connected to each other and having this great desire echoing the world of the great Jesuit saint, Saint Ignatius of Loyola. 
based on the word of our Lord himself, Jesus, who said, I have come to set fire on the earth, and how I wish it were blazing already. You see how the risen Lord really invites us to ignite the flames of faith, of hope, of charity, and passion for God's kingdom. So you see, my dear brethren, on this fourth Sunday after Easter, how our encounter with the risen Lord, with Jesus himself, in the church, in the devotions, in the sacrament, does not end when we leave this sacred place. Jesus never abandons us. Jesus always fulfills his, his, his promises. He's always faithful to his promises. So this Sunday, encounter is deepened if you take Jesus back home with you. Ask our Lord this grace. Allow him to shine brightly in your soul and your home for the greater glory of God and for the salvation of your souls. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.